Dave Collins, a weary traveler with crow's feet etched into his face, found himself in a nondescript motel room. The room was sparse, with just a lumpy bed and a small wooden dresser. The flickering neon sign outside painted the walls with erratic red and green light. Dave was a tall, rugged man in his forties, with a salt-and-pepper beard and a demeanor that hinted at a history of personal battles. Outside, the Midnight Oasis Motel stood like a solitary guardian on the edge of an abyss. The highway on which it lay seemed to slice through an endless dark forest, whose trees whispered secrets among themselves. Their leaves rustled even without the wind and seemed to beckon passers-by to listen, but not too closely. The air carried a peculiar stillness, as if time turned lethargic here. This corner of the earth seemed stuck in an older, more sinister era. Dave had chosen this place simply for its obscurity. He wanted an escape. From what, he could not pinpoint. But he felt he needed to be where no one knew his name. As the clock hands sluggishly met at midnight, the rotary phone on the dresser sprang to life with a shrill ring that sliced through the silence. The sound was so abrupt that Dave jolted from the bed where he was lying. With a trembling hand, he picked up the receiver. Hello? His voice was gruff, tinged with annoyance. A raspy whisper, barely audible, responded. Leave, Dave. Get out now. The line went dead. His heart pounded like a jackhammer in his chest. He tried to convince himself that it was just a prank, but the shadows in the room seemed to deepen, mocking his fear. Driven by a sudden urgency, he threw on his jacket and grabbed the keys to his Oldsmobile. As he fumbled with the lock, he couldn't shake the feeling that the eyes of the forest were on him. The ancient trees were now shadowy figures, watching, waiting. The night air was heavy as Dave crossed the parking lot to his car. He felt an oppressive weight on his shoulders, as if the night itself was pushing him down. The sounds of the forest were louder now, the rustling, the whispering. Among them, he thought he could hear his name being called, not from the phone, but from the shadows. As he slid into the driver's seat, a cold chill enveloped him. His breath misted the air despite it being a summer night. Dave turned the key and the engine sputtered to life. He looked up and saw the face of the motel clerk behind the lobby window, pallid and sunken, with hollow eyes that seemed to bore into him. Dave slammed the gas pedal and sped away from the Midnight Oasis Motel. His heart was still racing, and his palms were sweaty on the steering wheel. The motel shrank in his rearview mirror, but the forest on either side of the highway seemed to close in on him. As the forest swallowed him, a flicker of shadows raced alongside his car. Dave couldn't tell if they were just illusions crafted by his heightened fear or something more sinister. His journey into the unknown had begun. The darkness seemed to stretch indefinitely as Dave navigated the narrow winding road. The trees cast elongated shadows that slithered like specters across the asphalt. Dave's heartbeat thundered in his ears and his breaths came shallow. The forest seemed alive. The branches scratched at the sides of his car, and unseen eyes seemed to follow his every move. A cacophony of sounds emerged from the depths of the forest. There were rustles and snaps from underbrush being disturbed, the mournful howls of animals, and the distant rush of water. The night was teeming with hidden life. Then as suddenly as they'd started, the sounds ceased, and an eerie silence enveloped everything. The quiet was so profound that Dave could hear the blood pulsing through his veins. The Oldsmobile's tires crunched over gravel and fallen leaves. Dave switched on the car radio to break the silence, seeking solace in any human-made sound. A faint crackle filled the car before a gentle cascade of notes from a lone piano danced through the speakers. It was Debussy's Claire de Lune. The soft melancholy of the music provided a stark contrast to the foreboding shadows, and for a moment, Dave's heart slowed its frantic pace. As the road stretched onward, the dense canopy above gave way to a moonlit clearing. The music played on, a gentle lullaby in this haunting night. Then Dave saw it, 
There in the middle of the road stood a figure. Its back was turned to him, and it seemed to be wearing a tattered coat that flapped in a wind Dave could not feel. The radio suddenly cut out and the car headlights flickered as if struggling against the dark. Dave's breath hitched. Time slowed to a crawl. The figure slowly began to turn, and what Dave saw made his skin crawl. It was not human, at least not entirely. The face was obscured by shadow, but he could see elongated limbs and eyes that glowed like coals. It stared at Dave, and he felt as though it was reaching into his very soul. Suddenly, with a blinding flash and a screech that sounded like the tearing of worlds, the figure vanished. Dave sat, paralyzed. The car radio sprang back to life louder than before. The soft piano was replaced by an urgent, discordant symphony that shook Dave from his stupor. He slammed the gas pedal once more and tore down the road, glancing in the rearview mirror at the spot where the figure had stood. As the forest grew thicker, he realized that the shadows were not merely shadows. Faces, hands, and twisted forms writhed in the dark, pressing against the night. Just keep going. Dave muttered to himself. His voice was hoarse and cracked, as if he hadn't used it in years. He thought of the motel, the phone call, and the figure on the road. What was happening? Was he going mad? His thoughts raced as his car barreled through the night. Finally, he noticed the needle on the fuel gauge flirting dangerously with the letter E. His heart sank. Up ahead, a sign loomed out of the dark. Gas station, one mile. It was an ancient sign, worn by the elements, and Dave wondered how it was still standing. He had no choice but to stop. With trepidation, he guided the car down an even narrower road that led to the gas station. Unbeknownst to him, the shadows followed. The fuel gauge's needle dipped into the red zone as Dave eased his Oldsmobile off the main road and onto the overgrown track leading to the gas station. The headlights cut through the darkness, illuminating the derelict station that stood like a ghost from the past. It was a relic from an era long past, a lonely monument to forgotten road trips in bygone years. Its faded paint peeled off the weathered wood, and the rusting tin roof was perforated with gaping holes. Two ancient gas pumps stood sentinel out front, their dials obscured by a thick layer of grime. The whole place was bathed in an eerie, dim light from a flickering bulb swinging precariously from a wire overhead. As Dave's car ground to a halt, he killed the engine. The silence was deafening. He could hear the whisper of the wind, and he was sure the soft rustle of something else, a hushed conversation just out of earshot. He strained his ears, and beneath the normal sounds of the night, he could make out distinct whispers. It was an uncanny echo like fragments of sentences, as though someone were attempting to communicate. The whispers grew louder, forming an incoherent babble. Dave looked around, his heart pounding, but he saw nothing save the deserted station and the impenetrable forest beyond. As he reluctantly stepped out of the car, the whispering ceased. The sudden silence was unnerving. Dave fumbled in his pocket for a flashlight, shining it around the station. His light fell upon the rusted pumps, an old Coca-Cola sign hanging sideways, and the station's grimy windows. He could almost imagine the people who had once stopped here, blissfully unaware of the terror he was experiencing. With trepidation, Dave approached one of the gas pumps. It was an antique, its surface pitted and flaking with rust. He gripped the handle and was surprised to find it turned freely. He shoved it into his car's fuel tank and began to pump. As he waited, he turned on the car radio again, seeking solace in the familiar crackle of static. Instead of the soothing strains of music, he was met with an unnerving silence. Then, in a ghostly whisper, a voice came through the speakers. Leave! Now! Dave dropped the pump handle in shock. The ghostly voice was followed by a static burst, and then the radio fell silent. He frantically twisted the radio dial, but it remained stubbornly silent. Feeling an overwhelming sense of dread, Dave quickly finished filling his tank. 
His heart pounded against his chest as he rummaged for cash in his pocket. He spotted an old wooden booth with a pay here sign hanging crookedly on the side. He walked over, placed the cash on the counter, and turned to leave. That's when he noticed it. A yellowed newspaper clipping pinned haphazardly to a dusty corkboard. Curiosity peaked. He leaned in closer. It was an article from a local paper dated 50 years back. The bold headline read, Tragedy at local gas station. Family found dead. A shiver ran down Dave's spine as he scanned the article. It spoke of a family of four found brutally murdered at the very station he was standing in. The perpetrator was never found, but locals spoke of strange occurrences at the station ever since. Sightings of apparitions, eerie whispers in the night, and reports of an unnatural presence all suggested one horrifying reality. This place was haunted. Fear washed over Dave in an icy wave. The whispered warning, the spectral voice on the radio, the figure on the road. It all clicked into place. He had to get out of there, now. As he sprinted back to his car, the whispers swelled into a cacophony. The wind rose to a howl and the shadows danced with a frenetic energy. The darkness seemed to have a palpable, oppressive presence. Dave jumped into the car, fumbling to insert the key into the ignition. The car roared to life. He slammed it into gear and tore down the track back to the main road, leaving the haunted gas station receding in his rearview mirror. But as he raced through the forest, he realized that the shadows had not fallen behind. They raced alongside, reaching, clawing at the car. The whispers grew to shrieks as the forest itself seemed to close in. Dave gripped the steering wheel, his knuckles white. As he willed his car to go faster, he knew that he had disturbed something ancient, something malevolent. The road stretched endlessly before him, and the shadows closed in. Dave's heart raced as the car ate up the road, the forest blurring into dark streaks beside him. The shadows seemed to come alive, flickering as if dancing to some grim rhythm. A low rumble filled the air as if the night itself growled. His car, though old and worn, raced like a bat out of hell. The whispering that had filled the air moments ago turned into an incessant, angry roar. Rocks and branches pelted the car, thrown by unseen forces. The shadows kept pace, like specters, mouths agape in silent screams. As the adrenaline surged, Dave's thoughts spiraled. His life, which until tonight had been unremarkable, seemed to flash before him. He remembered growing up in a small, forgotten town, always dreaming of something more. His parents, now gone, who had always tried to protect him from the dark secrets of their lineage. He had never quite fit in, never understood why there was always an aura of sadness in his family. It was as if the shadows were tearing through his very psyche, forcing him to confront the emptiness he had long ignored. They were whispering his name, beckoning. And then it happened. The car gave a shudder, a metallic groan, and with a final jolt, ground to a halt. Dave's heart went cold. This couldn't be happening. There was no choice but to run. The shadows closed in as he bolted from the car, stumbling into the dense undergrowth of the forest. The forest was a cacophony of sights and sounds. Branches tore at Dave's clothes as he staggered through the underbrush. Shadows, both from the trees and the otherworldly, pursued him. The air grew dense with whispers, and shadowy apparitions appeared. Ethereal, ghostly figures, flickering in and out of existence, whispered fragments of conversations long past. Among them, Dave could discern distinct voices. They spoke of sorrow, of anger, and of revenge. One of the apparitions, an old woman in a torn dress, looked at Dave with sorrowful eyes. It seeks what was taken, she whispered. Her voice was like wind, rustling through dead leaves. Dave dared not stop. His lungs burned, his muscles screamed in agony, but he pressed on. Then through the shadows and mist, he saw it. The unknown chaser. A hulking figure that was neither man nor beast. Its eyes were bottomless pits, its form shifting and indistinct. 
It was as if the shadows themselves had coalesced into this horrific form. In his blind panic, Dave stumbled upon a clearing with an old cabin. The cabin was as decrepit as the gas station, but seemed like a sanctuary compared to the nightmare behind him. He burst through the door, barricading it with an old table. The whispers and growls grew louder as the unknown chaser closed in. The walls shook and the door buckled as the entity broke through. Dave saw it clearly now. It was a tortured spirit, twisted by rage and sorrow. He recognized in its swirling, shadowy form the anguish of souls left unrested. Why? Dave stammered, his voice barely above a whisper. The spirit spoke, its voice a cacophony of those Dave had heard in the forest. It spoke of a terrible crime, of lives stolen, and a curse born out of anguish. It was bound to the gas station, forever seeking retribution. As Dave listened, horror-struck, he saw images in the shadow. One of them was hauntingly familiar. It was his great-grandfather. The horrible truth hit him like a tidal wave. His ancestor had been involved in the tragedy at the gas station. As the chaser's shadow enveloped Dave, he felt his very soul being ripped from his body. The curse, unresolved, had found a new host. His final scream echoed through the forest. Dave's spirit was now one with the entity, bound to the place where it all began, with the anguish of the restless souls. The night grew silent once more as the forest swallowed the cabin. A new day dawned, and a lone traveler turned his car onto the road cutting through the forest. He had heard stories but dismissed them as superstitious nonsense. As the traveler drove, his car radio crackled and a voice came through. It was tinged with sorrow and a plea. Leave. Now. It was Dave's voice, forever bound to the shadows of the forest, eternally seeking to prevent others from sharing his dark fate. The forest whispered, the shadows danced, and the unknown chaser lurked, waiting. The cycle would begin anew, the curse unsated until vengeance was finally wrought from the annals of forgotten sins.